and I'll change the view. <clears throat> All right, coach. Okay, so listen, the big de debate that we've been having, and uh, I actually had it with the Burnettes last night. It's kind of funny because we, we've – I mean, I've known you because you went to Perkins. Correct. And uh, the craziest thing is I was talking to them. I was like, how do you guys pronounce their last name? <laughs> Nobody can pronounce it right. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's so crazy because – you were a state placer for Perkins in like uh, 99 or 2000. Yeah. Well, that was my cousin, Tommy. That was your cousin, Tommy. Yeah. Okay. Did you go to Perkins too? I went to Perkins too. Yeah. We were all, we all graduated together. It's back in like 97, 98. We graduated in 99 when DeMar Pentorn was there and Josh Quick. And we had a nice group of kids. Yeah. There. So how, okay. So what's the proper way to pronounce it? Is it Herms, Herms, Hermes? How do you guys pronounce it? Herm S. Hermes. So I don't even yep. say the correct pronunciation. No, no, I don't think anybody does. No tournament we go to. It's one of those things that you think at some point somebody would get it right, but they've yet to get it right. Does it like make you mad? No, it's all right. <laughs> but like the crazy thing is, uh, so your does your cousin coach with you too? Actually, two of them. Uh, Dusty, my cousin Dusty, who wrestled for St. Mary's uh, back when they had that run of state championships. He's our head junior high coach. And then my cousin Jason, um, who's Duke's dad, who's he's a freshman as well. Um, he was a heavyweight for Perkins back in the early '90s. He's an assistant on my high school staff. So Jason was a state placer at Perkins, wasn't he? Yeah, you probably wrestled with Jason, I would guess, right around that time. I'm I'm 98. I'm a 98 grad. Okay, Jason was third in the state as a freshman or as a heavyweight. I'm sorry. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. He, I remember him. You know, I really remember Nate Boggs. Nate Boggs, Jimmy McKenney, Chad Johnson. Yeah, he was back in with those guys. Yeah. I, I was a freshman. I just happened to be lucky enough to be Nate Boggs' drill partner my freshman year, and Nate was a senior. That was fun every day. Did Nate Boggs had a kid that was a state placer for Travis, too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Seth. And Seth's actually playing football right now, I think, at trying and doing pretty well. Boggs are freaks. They were freaks. Yes, Nate they were. Boggs was incredible. He was yeah. like, he was so explosive. And if you looked at Nate Boggs, he looked like a string bean. He looked like a basketball player. <laughs> yeah, I never forget the state finals. He was in the state finals, and it was like 15, 20 seconds to go, and he was up by two and on top and had the legs in. And he started celebrating on top with both boots in, raising his arms, and he got hit for unsportsmanlike conduct. So now he's only up by one with like 10 seconds to go and had to ride the guy out. It was Hagadish from Twinsburg. Yep, yep. I remember like it was yesterday. He started doing like, like that. Yeah, with a yeah boot. he's on top, double boots and celebrating. Right? right, yep. So crazy. Um, okay, so you guys live in Edison, right? Correct. Yep. Okay, so it's, it's actually Milan, Ohio. Yeah, right, Milan, Ohio. Okay, so I was looking at some of the past teams. My brother Chad used to wrestle against this, uh, one of the Housers. Maybe Steve? Steve Hauser used to just put it on my brother Chad. Yeah, Steve helps me out. His kids go to the school district here, and he helps me out with my youth club. So he was a state champ. Yes. And then I remember all the guys from the 90s, obviously, like Sam Springer. I remember he was a state finalist. Yeah, they had a good group. They had Springer and uh, Edwin Garcia, Eusty, Ben Gammy, Delameter. Chet, who is Chet? Chet Cochran. I remember Chet Cochran. Yeah, I see Chet a lot. Craig Messenberg. Craig Messenberg coaches with me at my at the, on the youth team. A lot of those guys helped me out with my youth. Craig Messenberg, Steve Hauser, uh, Eric Quillen, Ben Gammy. All their kids go here, so they uh, they helped me run the youth program, which is good. They all have kids, young kids, like kindergarten, first, second grade right now. It's it's crazy because now it's like a, a second wave coming back around, like we're talking about it, like. I know I'm right. old, right? Yeah. And Sam Springer, he, Sam's still in the community. It's one of those things, like, all those guys are still in the community. None of them really went away. It's, it's just, yeah, it's crazy to think that you guys are starting to come around with the second wave of those people. And that's got to feel good that you're doing it with kids from, from the area, right? Right, yep. And, then, and now your kids, how long have you been working there? This is, uh, this, would have been my, this is my 12th year in the district. So I taught. I taught third grade for one year when I came over to be the head coach. Um, I was an assistant at Perkins with Travis, 
and I was teaching at Norwalk. I taught at Norwalk Elementary for four years, and then I came here uh, to be the head wrestling coach in 2008, 2009, um, and a third grade teacher. And then the year after, I became the principal, and they weren't going to let me coach. Most districts, administrators aren't allowed to coach. Um, so they were going through some budget cuts at the time, and I was going to lose my teaching job, but it just, the principal just happened to be retiring. So um, I kind of just fell into it. There wasn't any interview or anything. It was really my only option, either be the principal or don't have a job. And I was only 27 years old. Um, but originally they told me they weren't going to let me coach, which I wasn't ready for. That was always my dream to be a head coach. Um, so I kind of talked to the school board and the superintendent to let me try it. And I told them, you know, if, if my coaching responsibilities and duties get in the way of administration stuff, then I'll agree to step down. So they let me try it. Um, and it's been going well ever since. So I'm going to leave it at that and not bring it back up again. <laughs> Obviously, my, administ my administrative job is 10 times what it used to be. I mean, you're in education, so you know things aren't the way they were 10 years ago. I was just blessed to have great assistance. I mean, that's when I had Damar Pentorn with me, um, Zach Meisler. I had Paul Sanchez, who was at Bellevue and came over and helped me, Marco Capone. So I had some great assistance that – because there's days, you know, we start practice at – our, we get out, we're, our district is 750 to 250 across the board, everybody. We're on the same time, preschool through high school. Um, so our high school kids get out at 250, and I really can't leave here until 330, 345. By the time all the kids get out of here, and I know they're home safely on the bus, so just in case something would happen, I have to be available. So my assistants, like this year, Tommy, I have Tommy Barnett and Dalton Howard and my cousin Jason. Well, Tommy Barnett leaves work early every day to meet our kids at school at 3 o'clock. And we do conditioning from three to four every day. And then once I get there, uh, we wrestle from four to six. So we go from three to six about every day. But if I didn't have assistants that could be there and, you know, be willing to sacrifice leaving work early, because then after we're done with practice, Tommy Barnett goes back to work to make up for that time that he's missed. So he's, he goes back to work from like six to eight or nine just to finish up the stuff he missed. So it works, but it only works because I have guys that help me and make it work. I don't think they make them any better as wrestling parents than Tom Burnett. Uh, Barnett. Oh, Tommy's intense, man. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> but he's all in it. He's all in for the kids. All He'll do anything. And, he's, and you know what? With Tom Barnett, you, you know where you stand all the time. There's right. No, there's no middle ground. There's no BS. <laughs> he's not going to tell you something that's he's not, the guy's not going to lie to you. No, nope. just black a and great white. guy. Right. Yes, he is. And he, he's a, Tom Barnett is, is a Burnett trained guy. Yep. And he, yeah, the guy's always come around. He's always been super honest and friendly. And like you're saying, he's intense, but he's yes. a really good guy. And then obviously it's been good for you. Both of his sons have been state champs for you. They have. Yep. Yeah. Great, great wrestling family. His wife, Lori, I mean, she'll do anything for the program, helps out at tournaments and they're just a great, a great wrestling family, which, those are hard to find, as you know, in wrestling. Wrestling's an intense sport and it takes a lot of time away from your family. So if you don't have everyone in the family on board, it usually doesn't work. So they're a family that has everybody, you know, mom, dad, kids, everybody's on board. So you have him. Which one do you have? Uh, you have Casey. You have Casey. I, Casey, Casey will be a senior. Yeah, Casey, you have him one more year. Yep. Casey and then Brady is at uh, Cleveland State and he's been battling injuries at 157. Yep. Yep. He's actually had to wrestle off another Burnett trained guy. Yeah, Nico. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. Right. It's crazy. But uh, okay. So let's just talk about the season this year, Davey. Um, mm -hmm. You guys, the Edison Chargers had like, I, I feel like maybe um, you guys were on route to do what Genoa did last year. I, it's just me personally. Maybe I'm biased. But I saw you guys a lot this year, and I've obviously seen you for – I've seen all this coming, you know what I mean? Like right. I, yep. I've seen all the OAC things. I've seen all this stuff coming. But I, I don't know if you were quite going to be at that level what Genoa was last year. I think in this next three or four years you're going to be at that level. But you guys had a banner year, man. You guys were – It was an unbelievable season. I mean, you're right. We, I mean, this is in, – in, unless you're involved in wrestling and been around the sport, you know, it's not one of those things you – you start in November and, you know, you finish in March with what we did. This is something that we've been planning for four or five years. You know, four or five years ago, we knew that we were going to have a 
four or five year run where we were going to be as good as anybody. You know, we saw the kids coming up through the youth program. We were winning OAC grade school state championships, winning the junior high state dual championships two years in a row. And it's one of those things you can see it coming. Um, but still a lot goes into making that all come together. You know, kids got to be in the right weight classes. Everybody's got to buy in. You got to have a great group of parents. You know, you can't have any distractions. Injury free, which is huge in this sport. You know, and in November, we said we were the best team in not only Division Three. we felt we were one of the best teams in the state of Ohio, period. And we've always been a program that, you know, if you look at our schedule and you look at our schedule next year, we'll wrestle anybody. You know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the three divisions, and a lot of times people think that Division Three programs are only good because they're a small school and don't wrestle anybody. I, I hate that conception, but I see where it comes from. I mean, it's easy to see because most Division Three programs – lack numbers, and you can't afford to go out there and compete with the big dogs, you know, Wadsworth, Eds, Graham. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a group of kids that have the mindset that they, they enjoy that. They want to do that. You know, we went 34-0. But 34-0, to be honest with you, it doesn't mean it, – it's fun to say and it's nice when it's all over, but I, I'm, I don't mind getting beat. You know, we didn't wrestle Wadsworth last year to go there because we, we wanted to go – if we wanted to go 34-0, we would definitely would not have put them on our schedule. Next year, we're going to Ed or to Graham to wrestle. It's us, Eds, and Graham in a try on January 9th at Graham. You're doing um, that. You know, we, we set that up with them. And, you know, Eds and Graham wrestle their duel. And I, and, I, and I called them to see if we could jump in. And, you know, it's one of those things that I think the fans want to see the best teams in Division One, Two, II, and Three all in one gym. And it's one of those things that never, ha it never happens. You know, every year you get the argument. You know, you got Genoa last year. Could Genoa have beat? I think Genoa was as good as any. They had seven, eight kids that were as good as anybody, you know, but you never see that. Genoa didn't wrestle any top-notch duels where they put those kids up against a Wadsworth or an Eds or a Graham. So it, you're always left to think who would have won that duel. Um, and to me, like I said, it's not about winning the duel. It's about giving the fans what they want, putting our kids in competitive situations, because at the end of the day, our number one goal is obviously to win a division three state title. We felt we were in a place to do it this year. Um, you know, I, I feel hands down, we were the best team in division three. I know there was a couple other teams right there in the individual tournament, but you know, we had 10 guys going to the state tournament. We were in a position where I felt, I thought we were the best team by 20 or 30 points at the individual tournament as well. But I feel like we're only in that position because of our schedule in December and January. Um, you know, wrestle on that duel. I think that was a turning point in the season. We went to Wadsworth on senior night, you know, and, and nobody thought we could win that duel. Nobody, you know, and I, I'm sure even Wadsworth thought that that was a duel. Little Edison's coming in. They knew we were good, but it's not, it's one of those things that you don't realize how good you are until it actually happens. You know, when we went in there, we beat them 42 to 27. And from there on out, we just, we kind of rolled through the season. We were 34 and 0 and 31 of our duels, we scored over 50 points. Um, you know, and we beat Wadsworth, we beat Medina Highland, we beat Perrysburg, we beat Oregon Clay. So it's not like we just beat up on Division Three teams all year. Um, you know, and then we rolled through the Division Three state tournament, dual tournament. Um, our kids wrestled. I mean, we were lights out all year. And one of the biggest things, like I said all along, is we were healthy. There wasn't a time all year where we had missing pieces. Um, and if we did, we have depth. I mean, we have, I'm going to be honest, we have – four to six guys on our B team, they're legitimate 30 to 40 match winners on a varsity schedule. So we have guys that can step in. This year, we didn't have a lot of depth down low, so we were fortunate to stay healthy in the lightweights. You know, next year, we bring in three or four really, really good junior high lightweights that'll be freshmen next year. So the future's bright, but, you know, like I said, we, we want to wrestle the best. So next year, we have Eds. We have uh, one week, we're wrestling uh, – Mentor Lake Catholic, Wadsworth, and Medina Highland on a Wednesday in a in a quad, and then the following, and then that Saturday we're going to wrestle Eds and Graham. So, I mean, you know, I, I think our schedule speaks for itself. We're at Brexville, we're at Maumee Bay, we're at the Frickers Duels. We don't wrestle Division Three schedule. So when we get to Division Three competition, a lot of times it seems you know a, a notch down, and it is a notch down for most. There's still you still got Detroit Christians, Legacy Christians, Wayne Dale. I mean, you still have five or six high-level teams, but overall, it's just the depth in Division Three is not there like it is in Division One and Two. So look, um, 
the standard, you know, you go to Brexville, and that's where uh, Max, your son, Max got his two losses this year at Brexville, right? Yeah, there's only two losses. Two Michigan kids. He didn't lose to anybody in Ohio. He took two losses to the Horvath, Horvath from Davis of Michigan, who was a top 10 kid in the country at the time. And, you know, he was in a match. Max believes he can win every match. You know, I, he's got the mindset. I don't say that just because he's my son, but he's got – he lives and breathes wrestling, and he hates to lose. So he'll do anything he needs to do to win. He's super competitive. Um, you know, he lost a 5-4 match there and, you know, made some mistakes – and then dropped down, and, and we lost to the kid from DCC. I think it was two to nothing. It was zero zero match. We went down, and he got cradled. There might have been two to one, three to one, whatever it was. But those were his only two losses. And from there on out, you know, we made some adjustments. And he's a kid that needs to attack. He's super strong for his weight um, and real aggressive. And he's just always, he kind of reminds me, I'm not comparing him to Logan Stever, but he's not, he just stays in position. You know, Max isn't a kid that's going to put up 15, 20 points, he's not a takedown machine. He just doesn't give up points. I think he only got taken down three times all year in 60 matches. So, you know, he, he grinds out wins, and but he's not a kid that after you watch him, you're like, wow, that kid, you know, put up 15, 20 points. He's not that type of kid. He is taking ground a lot, though. He's always He takes ground. He's always – he stays in position. He, you know, he, he's very good with his leg defense. He doesn't let guys in on his leg, and he just stalks you until he forces you into making a lot of mistakes. Uh, I, you know, the thing – I you know, like I – my nephew Owen used to wrestle him all the time, and now Owen's bigger, and he always used to just obviously like farm machinery Owen. Yeah. So I remember that, and he always <laughs> beat Owen up. And then the other thing is like what impressed me about him was his district final. Uh, his district final was like I was really impressed because the old Carver guy got him. Yeah. The Carver guy's real strong. The old Carver guy got him in a scramble or something in the first period, didn't he? It was actually in the third period. The third? We were up, yeah, we were up one nothing, And uh, Judge, who's a great kid, you know, we had wrestled him earlier in the year. We were wrestling him in the regional finals. And Max pinned him in under a minute. And, you know, we knew that wasn't going to happen again. The kid's better than that. Um, and we were up one nothing. They had a great game plan. They stayed away from Max. Max is the type of kid that needs to get his hands on you. Um, he kind of reminds me of Evan Cheek. You know, if you wrestle Evan from space, he's like, he's lost. But you let Evan get his hands on you you're in trouble. Max is a kid that likes to have his hands on you. You know, Judge did a good job of wrestling, you know, kind of in a three-point stance the whole match and staying away. And he put himself in a position to win the match, which is a great game plan for them. Um, and he got in on a shot on Max and had a single up in the air. Max is a, not a scrambler at all. That's one of his biggest downfalls. Unlike my middle son, Abe, Abe will scramble with anybody. But uh, Max is a kid that things need to just be solid and basic and fundamental. But uh, Judge had his leg up in the air with about a minute to go and ready to finish a single. And Max did an ankle dive and ended up on top. So he went out of his comfort zone. But that just shows you, you know, he's going to do what it takes to win whatever it's going to take. Abe's a kitchen sink guy. Abe is the kitchen sink guy. And, you know, it drives me nuts. <laughs> I don't know where he learned it. It's not from me. It's not the Edison style. Trust me, we're, we're a be in shape, go six, seven, eight minutes, whatever it takes, stay in people's faces and do things right. Abe does more wrong than right, but he's one of those kids. He reminds me more of a Cam Tassari back in the day, you know, one of those guys that here it comes. Whatever happens, happens, and he has fun with it, so I just let him go. Um, he lives and learns from his mistakes. You know, he, he'd rather give up five to get two, those kind of things. But at some point, in the match, he's never out of a match. You know, if Max, if Max goes down four, five, six points, the match is over. If Abe goes down four, five, six points, you know, the match has just started. So it's, it's two totally different styles, and you got to kind of embrace them both because they both have their positives and negatives. And, you know, Abe's going to be – he's really starting to enjoy the sport. Abe's been my kid. He's never loved wrestling. He, he's asked me for years to play basketball. He's just a freak athlete. He'd be good at whatever he does. Um, but wrestling's what we do, so we're not playing basketball. <laughs> so, uh, so he's super talented. His hips are so amazing. He is. He's a great baseball player. He's a freak on the baseball field. He's good at, I mean, good at everything. He can hit a golf ball a mile for a little kid. He just, one of those things that you're right. He's just a great athlete and it comes natural to him. He doesn't work super hard. I'm going to be honest with you. That's one of his things that he's been blessed just to be good without putting forth a ton of effort where Max, Max isn't a great athlete. Max is as good as he is because he just outworks everybody else. Um, Abe's the opposite, but Abe's finally starting to enjoy it. You know, he's had a 
you know, he was in the state semifinals as a sixth grader at junior high state. And obviously when you're winning, it helps you enjoy things a little more. And I think Abe, Abe feels like he has to be Max. You know, Max was a kid that won two or three grade school state titles. He won junior high state as a seventh grader, great freshman year, ranked number one in state. So Abe's kind of one of those kids that he's living in the shadow of Max, which you hate to see, but he's finally understanding that in his own way, he can be good and he needs to make his own path. As a dad, you know, we're talking, we're talking coaching, we're talking being a dad. Um, what's your favorite part about coaching them? What's your most challenging part about coaching them? You got two opposite kids. You got a guy who's a go for broke guy who's got amazing hips. And then you got another guy who's a never comes out of position, never breaks position. I've only ever seen him break position on a dive roll in the district finals. Right. You know what I mean? And, I, and I've been and watching. And I got a younger one that's a the younger one that's a 160 pound heavyweight that trumps them all. So <laughs> Eli's a tank. It's crazy because they're all so different, right? They are all so different. It, it's, and to be honest, it's what makes it fun. You know, there's, like I said, pros and cons. Abe. You know, when Abe goes on the mat, I sit back, cross my arms, and watch the movie. You know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. There's not much I'm going to say during that match that's going to change what Abe's going to do. Max, on the other hand, Max is super hard on himself. You know, and sometimes I feel like he, he's always asking me a million – every practice, it's a million questions on why this doesn't work. And our room is super tough. I mean, he's wrestling Holman and Fantuzzi and Bogus every day. So, Max doesn't win our room. You know, we got four or five guys down low that are all – top six, top four, top six guys in the state. And Max is small, but every time he gets taken down, he assumes it's because he did something wrong. He doesn't want to give the other kid credit, like maybe this kid's good. Um, so he's got a million questions, and it's just hard to get through to him. That's, you didn't do anything wrong. You just need to, you know, stay positive. But he always thinks he's, he's disappointing himself or he's disappointing me um, as a dad and as a coach if he loses. And I don't want him to, I don't want him to feel the pressure. And all year, you know, he came in his freshman year ranked number one in the state, which is to me, I hate to see that because that just puts unnecessary pressure on a kid that hasn't even wrestled a high school match yet. And there were some good kids in that weight class this year. Um, so it wasn't any time that as a community member, as an outsider, they just assume that if you rank number one, you should get number one. And, you know, my fear was if Max didn't win state this year, he would have looked at the entire season as a failure. And, you know, he would have thought that me as a dad thought it was a fair. And that's far from the truth. You know, you know as well as I do, they don't give away state titles. Um, and they're not easy. It's hard enough to win one, then alone two, three, or four of them. And when you come in as a freshman, you're ranked number one, everybody automatically thinks, oh, you know, Max Hermes is going to be the next four-time state champion, and it's just going to happen. And it's a lot of pressure. Um, but Max is a kid that understands that, and he doesn't mind pressure. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to see him affect him negatively because he feels that pressure from me and from outsiders who think, you know, he should just win because he's Max Hermes. How many Hermeses have been like state placers, state qualifiers, you know, because there's a lot of Millers. <clears throat> and I've got cousins who wrestled at Clay. Two of my cousins were one of state placer a couple of times at Clay. How many? Yeah, there's three state placers. Jason, Dusty, and Tommy were state placers. Um, Jeremy was state qualifier. I was back in the year when they did follow your man and got beat first round at districts by a kid from Lexington, Glorioso, who was ranked second in the state, um, lost a one point match. And then he went out and lost. So that, that's how my career ended, uh, because it wasn't a double elimination like it is now. Um, but Dusty was back. Dusty was in the, in the era with the great St. Mary's teams, you know, the Upfers and Tanner Shear and Spencer Dye and that group of kids. So Dusty was on that team that won state titles. What's Dusty doing? How did he get away? What? How did he? How those? We got him back. Just grab him. What are they doing? <laughs> we got him back. But uh, Dusty was Dusty. Kind of reminds me of Abe. Dusty was just a super athlete, strong farm kid, um, always on the attack. And you know he he's great for our junior high program. He's a junior. He's our junior high coach with Jude Michael. Jude was an Edison kid, um, state placer for us. So him and Jude run our junior high program, and they're great. You know, Dusty's more in your face, hard nose, and Jude's more of the technical Burnett guy um, showing the technique. So they do a great job. Jude Michael, crazy story about him is he went to Oklahoma with us on the junior duels at 98 pounds, and he upset like two or three nationally ranked guys, and we took third place as a duel. My nephew Ian was on the team. Yeah. Dave Habit was on the team. Stevers were on the team. It was a nails team. Uh, Tavanello, I mean, 
geez, oh, Pete. It was yeah, like, Jude was super good. He was he's yeah. probably one of the best kids, if not the best kid technically that I've had here in 12 years. Just technically did everything right. Super good technique. He was like the total outlier in the group, but he won like three huge matches for us. It yeah. Was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. And he, and he, but he was just wrestling hard. You know what I mean? Jude's, uh, the reason we, uh, Jude's the reason we cradle everybody. Jude's a cradle king, man. So you see our kids with that cross face cradle. That's all Jude. That's not me. So, okay. So you had this amazing year. You got this amazing support system. Your kids are some of the best kids in Ohio. All, all levels right now you got and they're they, they're all doing it different ways kitchen sink super solid calculated and then you know we're, we're rolling into you're gonna have two three maybe four guys in the finals maybe two three four champs you're gonna win by you said 20 or 30 I say 30 or 40 that like the yeah. whole year I'm thinking that like this guy does the rankings the bird yeah. and he keeps and he, and yeah, I understand, we, I understand we, he was going off the, the districts, and their districts are really easy. The other to the southwest uh, teams, right. they have an easy district. We get that, right? Compared to your district, right? And and and, and, and I was just like, that's not how it's going to happen, right? right? I'm like it's just it's not going to be that. And I know that you guys were worried about what Edison was doing. You're mauling people in duels and beating a bunch of D1 teams who are you know beating all the beat four or five top ten D1 teams. But you're going into it, and you got all this momentum. You have a great district. <laughs> How many guys out? Eleven. Ten out. Ten out. I was there. Yeah. Um. Ten yeah, out. Yeah. You're ready, man. It's like it's it's ready to happen. You're ready to do it. You're gonna win by thirty or forty. Let's go back to Thursday before the tournament. They cancel it. Where are you guys? What's the scenario? And how? What do you say to your guys? Yeah, we we left Thursday morning um, for Columbus. Got down there. You know, got checked in the hotel around noon. Uh, the kids were kids just wanted to chill in their hotel rooms for a while. And we were going to go walk around the mall or go play some video games. And my cousin Jason and I went to grab a bite to eat. So we went to uh, a Roosters uptown in Columbus there and grabbed lunch. And as we were eating, we started seeing everything come across the TV screen where NCAAs have been canceled and, you know, spring sports for NCAA Division One was canceled. And they were talking about Olympics and NBA. and you know, at that time, well, earlier in the week, you know, everybody was concerned because you know, kind of upset because they weren't going to let people in to watch, you know, and, and then they came out on Wednesday or Tuesday night where they were only going to let four adults or four family members, however you wanted to distribute your tickets, four per kid, you know, and our, and our families were upset, which I get. We had about two to 300 people coming down to watch us. So there was a lot of upset people. But at that time, I, had, I held a parent meeting Wednesday after practice, and I said, listen, guys, like we, right now we need to be fortunate that they're going to let us wrestle at all because I think we're real close to pulling the plug on this thing all together, and that's not what any of us want to see. So I get you upset. So we called the Embassy Suites, and we, had, uh, we were bringing down two or three big TVs. We, went, we rented their banquet, and we had like a watch party like you do for the Cavs on the playoffs or something. You know? So our fans were still all coming down. They all kept their rooms. Um, they were going to have a watch party because it was going to be streamed. Um, they were going to have a watch party back at the hotel so they could watch our kids and then just hang out with the team and the, and the coaches when we got back. Um, so we get down there Thursday and, you know, we're at Jason and I are at Roosters and I get the call that they've canceled the tournament and I wasn't with the kids at the time. So we left, obviously they heard the news. So we got back to the hotel and, you know, it, it was a, it was a crushing blow for sure because you're right. This was the year where everything went, we called it the perfect season. You know, it was it was perfect up until the very end. Um, and like I said, winning state titles isn't easy. People don't understand the time that goes into it from when these kids are four, five, six years old. This isn't something that just started in November and we can start it over again next November. We've been planning for this for a while. And it's because of the time these kids put into the program and the time the parents put into the program. And to see it all get taken away right at the very end, um, for something that nobody can control. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it was the wrong decision because it probably, we can all debate, should we have wrestled or not to wrestle? It doesn't matter at this point. You know, the concern was that we needed to err on the side of safety in people's lives, which is definitely way more important than high school wrestling. But it, it, it sucked. There's no better word for it, you know, and, and I feel terrible for, you know, out of the 10 guys, eight of them are coming back. So they're going to have another chance. We have eight underclassmen. Six of those eight are only freshmen, sophomores. So we're young. 
but somebody like Jacob Brewer, you know, Jacob Brewer, a senior, wrestled his whole life, you know, and, and was fourth last year. He was going to win Division Three state this year. Nobody was going to beat him. I don't think anybody was close. Um, and to see that taken away from him, because those are the things you don't get back. As adults, we're going to go to work. At some point, we're going to go back to work, and it's just going to be life as normal. But what these high school kids are missing right now is something they're never going to get back. And it's beyond wrestling. I mean, spring sports are canceled. So, and you, you just wonder how's it going to affect college scholarships? And, you know, there's going to be a bigger impact of this than everybody realizes. And it just thinks because, you know, my two younger ones are super involved in travel baseball. You know, we travel the country to play baseball. That's their number one sport, Eli and Abe. And, you know, it looks like baseball is going to be canceled, which they're young, so it doesn't really mean anything. But that's what those kids, that's what they live for. They're young kids, and they're missing out on things that they're never going to get back. So it was a tough pill to swallow. I mean, it, 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 it was. And this is the second time. I think the only – this is – in my 12 years at Edison, we've had – a legit shot to win the state title twice back in 2012 when we end up going to division two, because we were one kid over the cutoff, you know, that year, I think we were definitely the best team in division three that year. We just missed the cutoff by a kid. And then fast forward to this year, you know, I think we were, I know we were the best team in division three this year and it'll go down as one of those years with the asterisks, you know, you, you don't get to see the kids pictures on the walls at the school. They don't get to add their names to the sign or, I mean, they don't get anything. It's like it just didn't happen. You know, you can't put their name out. Yeah, I can't put Jacob Brewer down with an asterisk by it because I think he would have been a state champion. You know, I can't put Max. I can't – you can't do that. So, luckily, we got through as much as we did, I guess, and we were at least able to win the state duels and have some, I guess, good faith in what we did. But we definitely missed the most important part. You know, like, <laughs> you guys have been on that cusp of being D2, D3 a bunch of times. Did yeah. you recently have a, a situation with it this past time? You guys right at it, like right. Yeah, at we were. I think I think we were one or two. We're always right on the right on the border. I mean, the thing is, you never know where that that cutoff changes every year. So we're always, you know, we're on the big side, obviously of Division Three. We've in my twelve years, there was one two year cycle where we were Division Two. So we've been D three ten years, D three two or D D two. Th two years d3 for 10 of my 12 years but we're always right on the bubble now our enrollment as a district is is down we just this last count we had really big boy classes in our south or our freshman sophomore junior classes so but who knows you never know where that number is going to go and it's going to be interesting where that number goes in the future you know i know as a district as an administrator as we're starting to plan how many parents are going to opt to not even send their kids back to school this year and this is a count year yeah, so, my, my wife and I were talking about that. Like, we're, we're going to go back to school next year, probably. I, I hope we do. Yeah. And are half the kids' parents going to keep them home? Are we going to be teaching online classes and right. in-person classes? Like, are we going to have to go mm -hmm. home and then hold an online session for the kids who don't show up? And, like, it's just whatever, man. We don't know what the future is. It's very uncertain. And right. a lot of people are obviously super scared. But, you know, you just got to figure it out. And you got to roll with it, right? Like, right. boom. Your job as an administrator, um, is it just a bunch of Zoom meetings? Like, what, what do you do? Yeah, right now, so pretty much right now, it's a lot of virtual meetings, Google Meets and Zoom meetings. Like today, Wednesdays, I meet with my staff, you know, so I meet with each grade level for 45 minutes. So I'll be in, starting at 10 o'clock, um, I'll be in Zoom meetings from now till 3 o'clock this afternoon, just meeting with teachers, seeing how things are going, you know, listening to concerns. Um, just planning for the future. And you're right. A lot of it, we don't have answers for, but we still got to start planning. So when we do have answers, we're at least prepared. Are your other zoom meetings as sweet as this? Do you need to talk about the, no, none of them are, none of them are as interesting as this. I don't get to talk wrestling. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, man, you're, 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 I know you, elementary teachers do it feels like sometimes they almost do 10 times the work of it reminds me of wrestling you get out of it what you put in elementary teachers put in a ton of time um and it, people that if you teach junior high and high school you really don't understand that until you come down to elementary you know you, you, the kids aren't very independent yet so you can't give them an assignment to do for 15 20 minutes while you go sit at your desk and check your email and you know it, it's full go from 750 to 250 and those kids those five, six, seven-year-olds want your attention all day long. So it's exhausting. And if you have a son like my Thomas, my two-year-old Thomas, you can't escape him. No, no they're right on your leg. Class. 
They're right there with you. All You're day. stuck with them all day long. All day. It's crazy, man. Like that job, that's a really hard job. So you're probably hearing some really innovative uh, things on pedagogy. Yeah. And, um, you know, th just different things about uh, assessments and how you're able to track. Because the big thing there is they're tracking. They're learning how to read. They're learning how to do. And that's our biggest concern at the elementary level is th this is the age when kids are, they're taught their foundational skills, learning how to read, learning number sense. And it's hard to do that over a computer screen with a five, six, seven year old. So there is definitely a fear of the academic gap this is gonna cause for our younger kids moving forward. I mean, you got a group of kindergartners going to first grade that missed the last 12 weeks of kindergarten. And how do you go back and make that time up? Because you can't make it up over a computer screen. You know, and that's gonna fast forward to next year. I, I would be shocked if we go back to school on the first day and everybody's in session all at the same time. It's gonna be some sort of blended environment like you said you know certain kids come on certain days and the days they're not here they're doing something from home and you know so you're gonna you're looking at over a year of instruction that the kids are missing out on and the impact that's gonna have is gonna be huge you know and I know in Florida I brought this up to our I don't know if you saw what's going on in Florida and I don't know if it passed or not but Max uh, used to wrestle kid David McClellan he was an Ohio kid and he transferred to Lake Highland Prep to wrestle he's a freshman this year I think he took second to state in Florida they gave Florida gave the parents the option if they wanted to hold their kids back or not um, because of this. And the school, if you as a parent said you wanted to hold your kid back, the district couldn't tell you no. Um, and that was K to 12. So I know that's being talked about right now, especially at, the unfortunate part is you get in high school and people are going to do it for athletic reasons or other reasons and not academic reasons. At my, at my level, it would be for strictly academic reasons. Um, but you do see some validity in that argument especially with how much these kids are going to miss you know and, and if you're a high school parent of a high school kid and you know a lot of high school parents if they've done it for athletic reasons have already done it anyways yeah um be, but if in my opinion if you're a high school parent of a high school kid and you can still meet ohsaa's guidelines with what's going on right now why shouldn't you be able to make that decision for your kid yeah so like let me just quickly about the mellers i was held back a grade. My brother Fur or Tate was held back a grade. Okay. And we, it was like the first or second grade. You gotta understand, we grew up on a farm. Right. Dad was an iron worker. We ran around like maniacs all day. We didn't learn the alphabet. We didn't learn colors. Right. <laughs> we were under we learned the, how to work. Yeah. We were under the porch eating rocks. <laughs> or yeah like running around with my brothers riding three wheelers doing all this crazy stuff right like we don't learn a lot a lot of that a couple of my nephews ian he he if you can say it, flunked right we we were we were brought back he had to repeat repeat a great ian um jesus pete's uh wyatt all like a bunch of us have not been ready i'm just saying millers in general right have not been ready. And it's not like we got to eighth grade and we'd repeated eighth grade. It was like those years that are critical for reading, identification yep. of numbers, the basic skills. You um, needed that. Yeah, you needed it. Like we needed it developmentally. Like my mentality is I want my kids out of here. They're graduating. <laughs> oh, I'm gone. Like, I'm, right. we're not, <laughs> like they're ready. They're going. Right. right. Like, like I want to go hike and do my own thing when, I, when they're done doing their own thing. When, when I, you know what I mean? Like, right. Like I want them to go live their life. The quicker they get out of your house, the better. Yes. And, and, and that's okay. But my parents got stuck with Tate and I for another year. What is what you needed to do to be successful? What so. we needed to do to be successful. And that's like, and, and, and literally it's, it's for academic reasons. Right. Like it's crazy. Um, I know we got to start wrapping up here, but like, where do you guys go from here? And what's the future hold for Edison wrestling? And, 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 you know, eight of those guys are back. Any Iron Man for you guys? You know, that's a tough question, Zeb. We did, I got an email last week and we did get five of our kids invited to Iron Man. Um, it, it's one of those things I battle with every year. I'm all for the competition. It's not because we don't want to wrestle. The, the problem I have is then trying to pick what those kids miss on our schedule. Our schedule is so super tough. I'm not setting them out of Brexville. I'm not setting them out of Maumee Bay. I'm not setting them out of the Frickers Duels. You know, the issue we have is our home tournament. The Edison invite is our weakest thing, but I don't feel it's right to sit our kids out of our own home tournament. Um, 
you know, and then our duels is okay. So they can miss three points with a duel. Who are they going to sit out against? Graham, Ed's, Wads. I mean, it's hard to find on our schedule. We don't really have something that they can sit out of and me be comfortable. I'm not okay losing duels because we don't have our best kids in the lineup. And that we took some kids to Ironman four or five years ago, you know, Sam Stahl, Brady, Alex Newberger that year we had those guys and we came back home and we lost six or seven duels because we were missing our five best kids. So if, if we had a schedule where our, I didn't feel like our good kids were pushed, it'd be a different story. I feel like our schedule, you know, our, our good kids are, everybody's pushed on our schedule. And if they're not pushed, that means they're a freak. <laughs> so um, it's still, it's up in the air. We do have five kids that got invited to Ironman. I just have to decide if we choose to go that route, what am I going to hold those kids out of? Yeah, it's crazy. That's, that, that sucks that you have to make that decision. And I wish, I wish, to be honest with you, the Ironman to me should be treated almost like the region. It should be a – I don't know how you can do it, but it's almost like a prestigious event that kids are getting invited to. And they're not being penalized, but it kind of penalizes the rest of the team when they have to go to events without their so-called best kids. You know, and then you're putting, your, you're putting yourself in positions where as a team you're losing things and not doing as well as you could have because – your kids have to sit out. So I know they can't wrestle that without it, without it counting as points, but it's a tough decision. It's a tough decision when you're a good program with a good schedule. You know, if we were just an average team that had two freaks on our team and our schedule was weak, it's an easy decision. I'm taking these two kids to Ironman because that's what they need. They can sit out of something, but that's not what we have. They should have an exemption for it. I'm, I'm with you 100%. Right. You know what? At least you're not fighting the same rules that Michigan's fighting. Michigan's got some like horrible rules where yeah. they can't travel more than three. Now years. California can't leave California, right? Yeah, they that just happened. That was just right. the past season, right? Well, what their yeah. thing was, they didn't want them competing against the prep schools. Right. Who cares? I know you don't care. I know <laughs> you don't care. I love it. I right. love it. Um, you know, like it, it's crazy to think, uh, you know, Lake Catholic told me about the duel they were doing. I talked to Coach McIntosh the other day at Graham, and he was talking about – I want to say he talked about – he has Brexville the night before like, of that try with you guys, I want to say. It's something yeah, crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Is, is, that, is your duel with them in January? January 9th. It's us, Graham, and, I, and Ed's. He was talking about that to me. He was – Coach Travis McIntosh, like I had him on, uh, and he was talking about it. He's like, yeah, January 9th, it's on. And they have Brexville the night before. Yeah. You know, you got to appreciate the, the good programs because it's hard to find people. They're in the same boat. It's hard to find schools that will wrestle you in a duel um, when you get to that elite level. And that, that goes for any elite team. It's hard. I struggle to schedule every year to try to find teams for dual meets to fill those four dual meet points because it's hard to find Division three teams that want to wrestle because they're either not full teams or they're just not at that level. So why would you bring your team in, you know, to – to give up 60, 70 points when you can go find somebody else and your kids can, can be pushed. So I appreciate the fact that Graham and Ed's and Wadsworth will wrestle us. You know, it, it's helping everybody. And I think that speaks volumes for all the elite programs. We're willing to wrestle each other. And when you're willing to wrestle each other, that means you've put aside your ego and winning means everything. You're in it for the kids. You're in it to get the kids better. Um, the end goal for all of us is to win a state title. You know, Ed's Wadsworth, they're trying to win Division I state titles. Graham's trying to win a Division II state title. We're trying to win Division Three state title. We could care less. Not, we, not that I want to say we could care less who wins those duels. We're going to be super competitive, and we all want to win. But at the end of the day, whoever wins that duel, you're not winning anything. You know, the real trophy is at the end of the season, and the goal of those duels are to prepare your kids for those moments. <clears throat> How are – when are you guys going to start doing – like, are you going to do virtual camps? Are they going to try and do Burnett camps? What are you doing with the summer? Because you guys are super active in the summer, and you're at yeah. the barn all the time. I see you there all the time, and it's in your school district. Right. It's um, all kind of up in the air. I mean, we usually – three years ago, we ran our – we run our own camp here the last week of June. We brought in some great, great clinicians. It's a, it's a five-day camp, Monday through Friday, you know, and, and I have a different clinician come in every day that I pay – Um for our team camp, we used to go away to team camp and it was just getting to the point where it was costing so much money to go to these camps. And I wasn't sure the kids were really getting a lot out of it. They were having fun and it, it builds team unity. But at the end of the day, I want our kids to get better in wrestling. Um, so we opted to stay at home and we hold our own team camp the last week of June. But 
I haven't started planning yet because it's a lot of planning if it's not going to happen. Um, you know, our kids, we have a group of hardworking kids. We're a small blue collar school where we do not have great athletes at all. Um, our kids are good because they work hard. Um, their parents are super supportive. They trust the coaching staff. They're not making a bunch of excuses for their kids. Like a lot of parents do this day and age. Um, I don't deal with any parent problems at all, to be honest with you, which is they trust us with the kids. And I think that speaks volumes for the program. And that's the reason we are where we are. So these kids are at home. They're doing stuff at home. You know, they're on their own. They're working out. They're lifting. You know, a lot of these kids have mats in their basement. They have siblings. And they're doing what they can um, under the circumstances that we're in. Um, hopefully some of this stuff gets lifted here and we can get back to some sort of normalcy. It looks like free, we have a ton of kids at Russell Freestyle. I love freestyle season. It's just, it feels relaxed and it's fun. That's pretty much gone, I would think. Um, and, and before you know, I mean, I, I know fall sports are up in the air right now. So I just hope, I, I'm worried about next season, to be honest with you. You know, wrestling is a sport that's a skin to skin contact and you're packing thousands of people in a gym sitting on top of each other. And that's totally going against everything that's going on right now. So I do worry about winter sports just because it's so much of it is inside. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was having this conversation with John Stutzman, the head coach for the University of Buffalo, University at Buffalo yesterday. Um, and him and I were like, hey, man, if they got to do it next year, shut down December, January. Right. Shut down January, February. Let us have March. Let, right. Or let us plan accordingly to get a venue. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think they definitely need to start planning now because like we've heard all along, you listen to go, this isn't going away. It's not like in a couple months, this is going to be gone. We, we, I think we need to weather the storm and, you know, I know the, the hope is to get a vaccine and that's, you know, help with a lot of it, but it's not going to be gone by next wrestling season. It's still going to be there just like it was this year. And, you know, if we, the fear is, I know the fear is going to be if we pack gyms and have, you know, kids wrestling with each other, skin to skin contact, I don't know what that looks like right now. I want you to think about this. You and I were at that district tournament together. You know, last time you guys were on the mat. And we did an interview. I shook your hand. You know, I was sitting next. I was sitting in a crowd with people. Kids are wrestling. And that was life. That was, that was life. life two months ago, two and a half months ago, right? Yeah, it seems like yesterday. Up, right? It was just how it was. And right and now it's like this whole now it's gone it's gone yeah and it's like i don't think we realize how good <laughs> you know, like i say you, you feel guilty saying it because the overall goal here is to save lives of people yeah. and i haven't personally been if you were somebody that's personally been affected by it and had a family member you would probably speak from a different side but you're right at to what extent to how many things can we take away from kids how many businesses can we see get closed how many people can we see without jobs before finally we have to do something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I don't know. The, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know the right answer. I think the governor's doing the best he can do with the information he has. And we're just going to have to weather the storm and hopefully it works out. But you're right. There's a lot of things being taken away from a lot of people right now that they, they're never going to get back. I mean, we're talking about people losing jobs and businesses closing down. I look at Cedar Point. If Cedar Point doesn't open. Sandusky is going to take a huge hit. They're talking about losing 40% of their revenue if Cedar Point can't open. And the people that are going to lose jobs because of that, that's sad. Yeah, and it's just like Jacob Brewer. Jacob Brewer doesn't get his senior year back. Right. No, that doesn't come back. You know what I mean? It's, just, it's wild to think that. I hurt for the kids because I know how hard they work. I'm going to be a coach for a while. At least I hope to be. These kids only get a, a short window. To, to do what they're going to do and to see that taken away, that's not, they're not going to get that back. Yeah, you know, no, not, yeah, that's the biggest thing is, is the, the, the human cost on right. losing so much. Like you're saying, your kids, youth baseball, man, you learn a lot from youth baseball. Right. Yep. A lot there, man. Yep. A lot there. Now, listen, I know you got other meetings to go through. We're at, uh, we're seven minutes away from your first meeting. Is there anything else you got for me? The name. Why does it add, whenever I type your name, it adds a tilde. Did you ever does it do that to you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't type my own name very often, I guess. Yeah. It, it adds a tilde to, to, your, to Hermit. So That's wait, why people can't pronounce it right. Give the, give the proper pronunciation for people one more time. Hermes. 
Hermes, Ferdinand. Mama. It's Hermes. <laughs> Max Hermes is probably going to be a three-time state champ. Remember the name, Ferdinand. <laughs> so, um, all right. I know you got uh, meetings coming up, but, you know, if there's a parting message, what would you say to people? And, and, and you know, maybe not even about Edison yeah. Wrestling, but. It's got it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the biggest thing is telling everybody to stay positive, especially these kids out there. I tell our kids the same thing. Stay positive. This is going to pass. You know, it's real easy to get negative on everything right now. And I think a lot of good will come out. I know as a, as a person myself, I've spent more time with my family in the last four to six weeks than I've probably spent with them in the last four to six years. You know, I, I, more housework done, more hanging out with the kids. Usually we all lead busy lives and you kind of lose perspective on what's most important. Um, and that's obviously your family and your friends. And I think times like this makes people realize that, you know, work will be there tomorrow. It's high school sports in the big scheme of things, is it really that big of a deal? You know, us, us that live and die by it. Yeah, it is. But in the big scheme of things, it's not the end of the world. These kids are going to be fine. Uh, I think the more important thing is, you know, cherish what you have, you know, be safe, be strong. You know, we're going to get through this. And, you know, I tell the wrestling kids, we'll get back to wrestling at some point and we'll, we'll get back and have our, put ourselves in position, hopefully next year to win another state title. Um, so. Coach, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to covering it. Um, obviously, you know, I got nephews on the Oak Harbor team. You guys are always beating up on them. So, uh, you know, it's always given. They gave it, they gave it to us for a number of years. So we're just getting ours in while we can. <laughs> they're not going away either. I, I, I love that program. I've always said that's a, you know, I, I like to compare them to us. They're just programs that do things right. You know, their kids are well coached. Um, they're disciplined. They got a great group of parents. You know, you, you, when you go wrestle old Carver, I don't care if it's a down year or an up year, you know, you're going to get a battle. Yeah. Um, a lot of the teams in your league are like that. Clyde has been like that forever. Yeah. Perkins. Perkins. Right. Like with Travis, Travis, he's a piece of work. Yeah, I coach with Travis. I know Travis well. <laughs> He's just a big guy's hilarious, man. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if I could show my text conversations. I could I only imagine. You, oh, my gosh. That guy, he's something else. I like him. And then, you know, St. Mary's had great years. It's just your league yep. is amazing. Your league, league is amazing, and you are you just did a four-peat, right? Yeah, you're right. The SBC tournament's a mini state, and I, I'm going to be honest, that was our down point this year, and I was super – upset after the SBC tournament because I didn't think we wrestled well at all at the SBC tournament but then you know that night I'm sitting around with a couple of the coaches and I'm like you know what we wrestled bad at the SBC tournament and still won this league by 60 points um which I think speaks value I mean we won that we won the I looked at our group of seniors four-time SBC champs three-time state finalist you know it, they've had a great career and for us to win that league outright for four straight years that's always my goal I'm not a fan of the Bay River and Lake Division. I'll say that now. I don't like that at all. I hate it. I don't like I that at all. Hate it. And our kids know from day one, if we don't win the whole thing, I don't want a, a River, Bay, or Lake trophy. They can keep it. You know, I want to win the whole thing, or I don't want anything. So, um, But I like the way it's set up. You know, I, I like the way that it's one weight class. It's made the league super competitive. ton of state qualifier. It reminds me of the old SBC. So, Yeah, yeah just nails. Okay. Yep. I got 9.57 right now. You got a right. meeting in three minutes. I promised you I wouldn't keep you longer than that. Thank you for the time. Good luck to the Chargers moving forward. Um, I normally talk to people off camera afterwards. We don't even have time for that. Thank you for yeah. the time. Good luck to you guys moving forward, and we'll keep talking to you. All right, Coach? Thanks, Zeb. I appreciate it. See you later. Yeah.